was the scariest drug experience you've ever had, X? Smoked salvia once and got stuck in a loop. It was fucked. Amanita took complete control over me, but it also took my memories, so eh. High doses of LSD melting my brain, not being able to recognize my cat or remember who I am was weird, but not scary. Took acid with a friend one Saturday night. My poor mental health at the time culminated in me, living out the plot of Jacob's Ladder, which I hadn't even watched at the time. We walked circles around an old bungalow type elementary school, unfulfilled with how phony modern civilization can be. He says the driver of a car that had been following us was going to shoot us in the back, but that it was okay because it's the nature of living in LA. We get that sinking feeling in our stomachs and speed walk back to his house. I convinced myself that I had been shot. A searing pain was felt in my back and he kept asking me questions about my childhood, as if trying to keep me from blacking out. We feel that primal fear as we get to his front yard, knowing the car was going to pull up any second. The infinite night began and I repeatedly tasted iron in my mouth. It was February and the cold fooled me into thinking that I was dying. A friend comes over to try and calm us down with a car ride, except it feels like I'm being ferried to hell, and all I can think of is the people that I love and how I won't see them anymore. G-men are after us because I figured it all out. Everything feels like a movie playing out, but you can't do anything to stop it, or in trying to change the course, you advance the story. They drop me off at home as revelation after revelation explains my life away. In the morning, my mom is convinced that I have been possessed. And while still tripping, she forces me to take a scalding hot shower and midway changes it to ice cold. A family friend who was a shaman gave her these instructions. I bathe in clear water that then shifts into filth. I am the love and the hate. I am God and I am dying millions of times, and I just want it to stop. It's Sunday, and everything is too peaceful, so this must be heaven. I feel refreshed and lighter than air. Gold rays fill the living room, and it's over. The evening is spent just lying down on the couch trying to come down. I bought the ticket. I took the ride. Took shrooms. Ended up in hell was informed I had a job to do and that I would be here forever. I am every person that existed. They are all me, but I'm being tortured in this vessel. They have all gone through my pain, my suffering, my torture. It was like a shitty voyeurism thing where everyone else is me or watching my avatar and my suffering, but it's self-inflicted. Massive fourth plateau DXM trip about 10 years ago. Met extra dimensional beings made of light and pure love, and I asked them to take me to the edge of the universe. They looked uneasy and kept asking me, telepathically, are you sure? Are you sure? They took me to the edge almost instantaneously, and there was a black void at the end of the universe. The void was conscious, faceless, and nameless, and utterly evil. It kept beckoning me to step into it, promising me all of the knowledge of the universe. Meanwhile, the extra-dimensional beings behind me were screaming at me, telling me to come back quickly and to not take a single step further. The void seemed angry, and I knew if I stepped into it, it would literally consume or destroy my soul. I understood that souls were what it preyed on, and its favorite was pure, uncorrected souls not saying I am one, took what felt like forever to make my way back to the benevolent beings who seemed visibly disturbed that I almost stepped forward. DMT, tripped dozens of times, was great until it wasn't. Had one trip that was much different than all of my previous. My veil of senses was obliterated and I was exposed to some extremely high order energy. I can't explain it like my soul being tasered by the sun or being electrocuted by lightning. Intelligent organized light absolutely ripping through me 
and my senses at an extremely high velocity. Colorful, intelligent, organized, computer-like. Meanwhile, a computer voice kept telling me that something went wrong and I was not supposed to see any of this and that they were working to put me back together and going beep boop and shit. I have dipped my toes lightly into DMT since and it's not the same. Feels like my soul is Velcro into the ocean and if I take DMT again, my soul is going to detach and get lost forever in some universal current, unsavable, accompanied by feelings of terror. Something tries to tell me that I'm not welcome back for abusing it and that they do not want me there. And I also broke something inside of me that means I can't take DMT again or I risk losing my soul. Bad DXM trip and possible near death or serotonin syndrome. I have tripped on DXM hundreds of times and I had both amazing experiences and hellish ones. But the last time I tried a full dose trip, I think I almost died. There was no lesson. It was just four to six hours of torturous hell. I felt like my body was shutting down and I was dying. I felt the opposite of euphoria. I think it was a bad interaction with my current psych meds. And I didn't know what would happen since I had been sober, since starting said psych meds up to that point. My current meds that I'm required to take at the moment are what prevent me from attempting another DXM trip. My psych meds also nullified an LSD trip because antipsychotics counteract it. I won't go into too much personal detail, but let's just say I won't attempt serious trips until I get off my depression pills, anxiety pills, and the mood stabilizer, aka antipsychotic. Salvia made me feel like the real secret to existence is that I was walking down the street with my family one day and I fell and bumped my head and the experience I'm having of real life right now actually all exists in less than one second of actual time in the real world. And someday, I'll blink, look up, and everyone will be standing over me, looking down, asking if I'm okay. For all I know, I'm still in Salvia land took acid and then licked the foil that I was in, thinking it was bullshit that the foil having anything on it would influence a higher trip. First three to four hours, I was tripping and drinking booze while watching YouTube. I was hitting max serotonin intake, and then I started hearing banging on my door, and I'm home alone. Instead of hiding or being afraid, I kept going outside, but the corners of my eyes, I kept seeing lizard-like faces literally three centimeters away from me. But when I turned, it looked like they would hide behind my back. Though, I never once felt fear. I always just acknowledged that I am on drugs, so believe nothing. As soon as I go back into my room, it seemed like they disappeared. I think perhaps my mind did this as I had a cross necklace on my wall next to my bed. I kept needing to go piss, and each time, I would be pissing with lizards in the corners of my eyes both sides of my head, and again, I just laughed a lot. I think when I hit my second peak, I smoked some weed and I kept imagining the lizards smoking it too, and we all watched YouTube together, DNSL or something. Then, closer to the trip ending, the true fear happens. My girlfriend had me on video call and I had to pretend I wasn't tripping. So I went to bed while on video call and every time I closed my eyes, my body felt like it was slowly turning into a tree. Salvia was terrible. Everything turned into structures of rotating bricks and I became paranoid that all my friends hated me. Benadryl made me start seeing demons. Hatman, smilers, spiders, parasites, shapeshifters. I had never heard of or read about the Hatman or even the smilers. Didn't realize until later that it was a common phenomenon and I wasn't even taking huge doses. I would just take one or two to help me put to sleep, and I stopped taking Benadryl, but I kept seeing the demons. Some doors should never be opened. Benadryl, easily. I have done nearly all psychedelic substances, including DMT, and Benadryl was easily the worst experience. 
I took 700 milligrams around 4 p.m. one day and kept getting up and down to pee, but I was in a loop, so I never actually ever got up. I saw the hat man and a giant spider, which should be pretty obvious. I ended up seeing the hat man in the shower a couple of days after when I wasn't on anything. I have heard that the hat man only shows up when you're at your worst, and I can vouch for that. On my end, I was definitely at my worst. I think smoking too much weed always takes the cake for me. I don't really fuck with it too much anymore, and when I do, I only do a small amount to feel relaxed. Shit can be horrifying. It's like facing every single thing you don't like about yourself all at once. Always been my own worst critic, I guess. An LSD trip like three years ago told me robotic spiders from the future were coming back in time, a la Terminator, to eat my face off. Although, in that moment, it didn't seem scary. Just matter of fact. Smoking salvia in my best friend's backyard, took the hit, leaned back in the chair, and looked at the sky. And the sky unzipped, like I could even see zipper teeth on the edge. And above me was a beautiful brunette woman in a summer dress, and an elephant-headed dude like Ganesh. They both sang the most beautiful tune in harmony, and it ended with the low of, have a great little existence, and it zipped back up. I'll admit this wasn't scary in that moment either, and was also very matter of fact. I guess amazed or astonished would be a better word. I never felt abject fear during my tour of duty as a psychonaut. I took LSD once and saw spiders crawling everywhere and all over me. I came to realize they were the 3D manifestations of my profound anxiety. It has made me speculate if entities could actually attach to you astrally. However, I conclude that the spiders were not real. Though distressing, it was a beneficial experience, making me reflect. Though I'm glad I had seen the exact same thing in a movie or a TV show, and I knew it wasn't real from my memory. In the movie, they died because they got violent with the spiders, and because the spiders were on and in them, got violent with themselves. I wonder if that could have happened to me. Anyway, uh, anxiety is like having unseen spiders crawling all over you. They are felt, and they make you fearful and on edge, yet they are not seen. I took research chems two separate occasions that this occurred. All I see is black and white light. Experience complete fear. Thought loop of learning that the universe is experiencing self, and that fear is quote unquote necessary. And yes, my brain is fried and I don't give a fuck for autocorrect. I tried so hard to hold on, and I'm not sure why. It was so scary to let my consciousness slip further into this thing that was going on. But when I finally gave in, I felt a release. Then I threw up, pissed myself, and had a seizure. Another few for me. Fentanyl overdose. Got narcan and came back throwing up soft serve ice cream and sprinkles. Didn't see any afterlife or typical near-death experiences and started to doubt that our souls go beyond our bodily life. Another, psychosis from weed and Adderall because mentally ill from consistent drug abuse. Had periods where I thought I was being suffocated from gas released from the smoke detector. No sleep, no eat. Meet strange demonic people, real or imagined. They read my mind and implant thoughts. Randomly start having the best orgasm ever without any stimulation. End up in psych ward and get meted out hard. Booty juice every hour until I turn quote unquote compliant. Meet strange doctor who, looking back, was 70% sure a reptilian that tried to get me to sign my rights off. Only reason I was let out was because my insurance expired. Called to ask to speak to the Draco doc and I find that no doctor there goes by the name I was given. Pretty tame, luckily, but I'll contribute since I enjoy reading these threads. I smoked research chems when I was like 16. I remember seeing interdimensional terrorists were here to fuck up the timeline and make everyone upset, or something like that. It was really distressing and I don't remember any of it. 
I just told myself I needed to remember the word terror. Also, there was definitely something about Christ being the savior. I wasn't even religious at all at the time. I was a heavy weed smoker at the time, but after this quote unquote trip, I could never smoke weed again. I always got the same sort of paranoia. Second time was when I was into pole and edgy shit. I took acid and could hear moon man songs and swastikas turning when I closed my eyes. All that stuff is so fucking negative and bad juju. It's a shame folks around these parts fall into that trap. Took a handful of edibles when I was 16 and came to the realization that I was a victim of pedophilia and my parents were complacent towards it. I had just pushed a memory down into a crevice. I had dissociated that night and I never came down. Faces make me feel sick now for uh, some unexplainable reason and they have since then. This happened eight years ago. Dying hundreds of times in a loop on shrooms. Haven't touched psychedelics since. I'm still convinced that that's what dying feels like in real life though. Hopefully, next time I die, it will just be once. Got too high off of weed and may have overeaten, but unironically, felt like I was about to have a heart attack or a stroke. I was very overweight and would overeat and smoke copious amounts of weed daily. It was just about every day by most people's intestinal standards, but something went awry either from the weed or the food, and I was crippled with pain and discomfort on the toilet. And at one point, my vision was fading, much like when you rub your eyes when they're closed and that you see fireworks, but this happened while they were open. Not a sensation I would wish on my worst enemy. Salvia was also the first drug I did. Pretty sure I went unconscious and hit my head. The single most bizarre and inexplicable feeling I've ever had, and I still can't piece together what it is I thought I was experiencing. Maybe I thought I was the ground? I really don't know. Salvia is pretty cool though. The coolest and only worthwhile one, in my opinion. I took four hits of acid my friend gave me, and they weren't normal tabs of acid like I expected. Whoever laid them fit as much as they could on them and was just selling them to their friends. When it kicked in, these incredibly brutal thought loops hit me. It felt like thousands of years of the same thoughts. It drove me absolutely insane within the span of a second and didn't end. I blinked and woke up in a city with thousands of people walking around. Everything looked more real than real and was moving in a higher than normal frame rate and smoother motion. I didn't know what was happening, but after a little bit of this, everyone around me froze and glitched out and faded away to a white room. I started being killed over and over on a loop until eventually everything fell away and I saw basically the blueprint, the building blocks of life. I saw the Big Bang. There was chaos and order emerging over and over. I saw something fall from a star that sparked the beginning of life on Earth. I lived through memories, both mine and universal memories for what felt like lifetimes. Eventually, I fought my way out of this. I looked at the clock thinking, wow, what a trip, before realizing it was only just starting. It was only a few seconds since it hit me. I couldn't remember anything anymore except for smoking a cigarette before blacking out. I became convinced that I dropped a cigarette and had burnt the house down while I passed out and died. I was going to piss on myself to attempt to put out any fires, but instead a water bottle was nearby so I poured it over me. I felt like I was burning, I had a piss so bad and didn't realize it. Eventually my body started trying to go to the bathroom on its own, but my bathroom was being repaired and I didn't remember this or how I was supposed to go to the bathroom. I looped around my house until I broke down crying hysterically in the middle of it and my sister found me. She took me to the bathroom. I thought she was a doppelganger and I was in a coma recreating my life to comfort myself. I broke away after this and traded places with an entity that was spread out among a constellation of stars. I kept going in and out of hallucinations. It looked like I saw footage of other people. I saw what I thought was Charlie Sheen getting dosed by someone and freaking out thinking people were trying to kill him from the perspective of a bird outside his house at the time. This was an incredible trip. I have also had a DMT triple on LSD that for some reason didn't end normally. After I came back I couldn't remember what a human was for hours. When I remembered I was alive and my senses returned from the void, I cried like a baby. It was as if I had just been born. I met the universal consciousness. 
decide to try acid for the first time camping. Pop a tab in the morning, double dip 200 micrograms. It starts to kick in. My mind is melting into the sky and it's the best feeling of connection with the universe I've ever felt. Ride in friend's truck and buy this trippy orange and yellow blanket. Get back. Somehow, I'm in a tent. Friend says he'll split the other tab I had with me. I'm baked as fuck. And my friend says he'll take half if I take another half. Then, this pussy coward, who I'm probably going to give a taste of this shit someday, backs out. And I'm stoned as fuck, so I just said fuck it, and I take the other half. 400 micrograms, now loading. I walk around still feeling good, playing frisbee at some point, which was super fun. I stumble across the campsite high as balls, and I see this group of other high schoolers, with one exceptionally hot girl. My hyper god tier brain bans the fuck out of every chud in the mix, and I sit next to her, look her in the eyes, and was starstruck. She was also. <laughs> Told her that I'll be right back because I wanted to clean myself up, which was the worst possible mistake I've made in my entire life. Stumbling back, the second tab kicks in. Some Filipinos playing beer pong I said hello to, and they're nice. Some dude comes out and asks me what I'm on, and I say acid for some reason. He immediately takes this as his cue to proceed to assault the fuck out of me strangling me, pins me on the ground, and puts 250 pounds of his weight on my neck, which I can feel is about to snap. I'm screaming in the worst pain of my life. No one does shit to help. And then, fuck brains finally lets off my neck and ties me to a golf cart and takes me back to my camp. The second tab is kicking in and I feel this insane pain in my neck from the feeling of my neck being practically broken from the assault, sends me into a spiral of insanity. Field of people surrounding me and filming me, recording me. Strip naked like classic bad acid trip out of a movie. End up in a tent for about five hours, being tortured by the most insanely demonic energy and forces that would make anyone wish they were dead. It took everything in me to fight off that force. It was hands down the most difficult mental torture I could ever conceive. And even a slightly longer amount of time in that state, I would have been insane for good living in a Home Depot bucket. But going through that mental torture made me much tougher and made me realize just how soft people actually are. If only they knew the pain of the hyper schizo acid dimension. I have since tried acid again and I've had positive experiences, but still, I have had the battle against the schizoid energy. It's not something to play around with. Took 200 micrograms of THC in a gummy. Didn't think anything of it until it hit. And it hit hard. Lost all control of body. I felt like jello. My mind was stuck in the past, present, and future at the same time. I could only remember anything in one second increments. Everything after one second, I completely forget even thoughts. Time passed by incredibly slow. A few minutes felt like hours. I do remember thinking I died and went to hell and that I was stuck in an infinite time loop. I wanted to die so badly just so it could end. The whole ordeal was about four to six hours. I don't remember. I tell people it felt like a fate worse than death, but it gave me a new appreciation on life and I don't really fear dying anymore as I know there is something worse. On 4-Azotoxy DMT, I had an ego death experience. I started in a first dimensional plane. I could only perceive things as an all-encompassing line. I could tell I wasn't alone. There were two beings watching me. They were surprised. Then we were in two dimensions and I could see them as simple shapes. They thought this was hilarious. They laughed at my confusion, making fun of me, but they weren't malicious. They hung out with me for a while. We moved on to three dimensions, but I don't remember most of that. We might have not bothered spending much time there, and when we went to 4D, I was again overwhelmed, experiencing everything all at once. Time was meaningless. There was more, but it was beyond my comprehension. They gave me advice on my mortal body, that there were problems with my DNA that could not be fixed. I wasn't diagnosed with EDS or 
pots yet. They helped me fix my posture and told me not to worry about things outside of my control, gather experience, and learn to let go of pain. They explained how small my perspective was, that there were so many things I couldn't perceive, that life isn't meaningless, but our little lives are minuscule in the face of the universe. The typical ego death experience, I think. The fractals and patterns of the universe, the beauty of it all, the pointlessness of spite, violence, grudges, and selfishness. They were rather kind. There was something about how we are here as humans, voluntarily, like we chose to exist. It's incredible when you feel entirely out of control, like you aren't imagining this, but experiencing it. You know what I mean. Had an insanely weird and scary experience on FXE. It's an analog of ketamine. I was watching the movie Open Range. I like watching movies or gaming on dissociatives because it's incredibly immersive. Well, last night was a new level of immersion. I did a pretty big line and sat down watching the movie. I slowly started losing touch with reality. My entire life became my TV screen, and myself was displaced into the movie. Not like, ha ha, whoa man, it feels like I'm in the movie. No, I was in the fucking movie. I left my body and I was in the saloon that they were all in, watching the encounter take place between the main characters. My presence was acknowledged by the people in the movie. Now you may ask how this is even possible on a technical level because movies switch frames and angles frequently. Well, that was actually the weirdest part, which makes this experience so noteworthy. I was inside the movie, so the different angles and frames ceased to exist. It was just a 3D rendering of this saloon setting, with the main characters doing stuff. I can't, I can't emphasize enough that I was actually in the movie, in the saloon, and able to actually look around. Now, obviously, since I'm on a ketamine analog, it wasn't incredibly detailed, but it was detailed enough for me to completely lose my sense of self. The experience was accompanied by a feeling of, this is your real life that you forgot, as if, Everything leading up to the moment where I put the movie on was divinely coordinated so I could return to reality, which was within this movie. As if it was some portal into my old life and clues had been placed in my previous reality that would all lead up to me watching the movie so I could quote unquote remember and break out of the spell that was my previous self. This last story, although much aligned with the theme of this thread, is ultimately different because this story here, coming up, is my experience. Uh, please be nice to me, thank you. Bro takes me to a new shop in town. Walk in, thinking it's all going to be CBD and placebo stuff. Cashier suggests gummies that say, 100 milligram Delta 8 THC. Never heard of this before. Chick goes, yeah, if you want like a small high, this is all right. Go back to friend's place, eat food, wait like 30 minutes. Decide, fuck it. Take one. Bag says one gummy equals one serving. Think that I'll just get a dumb smile on my face and want to watch Family Guy. Soon, feel semi-high. It's working, that gif. Bag says after two hours, the quote-unquote full effects will kick in. And after two hours, the full effects stomp my brains in. I feel a shove against my chest. My skeleton falls back. My flesh remains in place. My brain gets put into a glass box that rests above my body. Text girlfriend that something is happening. Fingers go inside of the cell phone to hit the buttons. Suddenly, I am aware of everything. Not just surroundings, but the matter that makes up the surroundings. I feel flat, deflated, like jello. If I want to move, I have to mentally act like I'm running a machine and that I pull levers and shit. Time takes forever. I must have tripped for about 5 hours, but it felt like 18. I have zero control over my entire body. What the fuck was that bitch talking about? I can think of responses when I'm talked to, but my mouth refuses to say anything more than two words. Almost like my brain conjures up a whole sentence, and my mouth has a two-word capacity. So, majority of my responses are, yeah, or mm-hmm. After 30 minutes, or in my mind, two hours, 
I wanted this shit to end. After 60 minutes, I say, Hey man, I want to throw up, but I can't move. I did actually say it like that too, very cheery. He said, hey man. <laughs> Friend quickly gets up, helps me over to the trash can, and I witness myself throw up in stop motion. As in, I see it come out of my mouth, and then it's in the trash can. No in-between frames. Step outside for cold air. Just stare at a tree for God knows how fucking long. Witnessing it flow and quiver in stop motion as well. Finally stopped tripping at about 11 p.m. I took this at about 4.30 p.m. Look up the Delta 8 gummies. Haven't been able to respond to girlfriend because zombie mode. So, phone is blown up with worried messages. Turns out a recommended dose is five milligrams. The website even has a warning about psychedelic effects. Yeah, if you want like a small high, this is all right, LOL. <laughs> also, because I ran out of fucking character limit, uh, I got home with a lift or an Uber, actually. I tried to get a lift, and nothing was available. So luckily, my friend was able to get an Uber. I was conscious, and I was able to move around by the time that the Uber showed up, but I was still baked out of my mind. <laughs> the trip itself lasted five hours, but it kept coming back, like, sporadically for about two weeks. I would just be, like, cooking or laying in bed, and next thing you know, I would feel... And the, the only way I can describe it was that, like, butter was melting into my teeth. That's the only way I can describe it. Like, I don't know. I don't know. Butter was melting into my teeth, and that's how I knew a trip was about to happen. I tried to tell everyone that it's, like, complete opposite of drinking. Where it's like, you drink some, you drink some more, you get a little, you know, you, know, you get, you take the edge off, then you get tipsy, then you get drunk, then you get really drunk, then you get blackout drunk. Anyway, yeah, that's how time six accidentally experienced his first trip for the first time, so, you know, that, that's, that's great. That's wonderful. What's the creepiest, most disturbing, or mysterious thing that you've stumbled across on the internet? I'll start. Be me. A few years ago, during high school. Fucking around online. Researching Columbine Massacre because that was my interest of the day. Watching a video on YouTube showing CCTV footage of the cafeteria during the shooting. Scroll through comment section. I'm no stranger to edge lords saying edgy trollish shit, but one comment by a user named Lynn Ann sticks out to me. Her profile pic is of the shooters, and she basically says that all of the victims were ugly and looked better decomposed for whatever reason. I'm compelled to check out her channel. A few of her videos have a couple hundred thousand views. She looks like a fucking ghoul. Her face is destroyed by, what I assume, plastic surgery. Her videos consist of her talking in her room in a weird accent, defending the shooters, smiling like a creep, and showing off her Columbine shooter merch, including blankets, mugs, and waifu body pillows. Yeah, really. A few horror or obscure media-related YouTube channels have actually talked about her. Pretty sure archives of her videos still exist. Strangest conversations that you've had at a bar. I'll start, I guess. It was two days after St. Patrick's Day, and I was in college. The day before, me and seemingly half the university's upper class men had been at this bar eight to two, as we had on St. Patrick's Day proper. We wrecked the place so bad both nights. The owner, an older half deaf guy named Bobby, I think he's still alive, had banned all college kids for the following night. At least, that was what I heard. Still, nonetheless, I had a beard and with it, I looked older. So with a headache killing me, I went down to the pub to have a drink. It was an old Irish pub not far from my campus. The town's a little south of Gettysburg, right over the Maryland line. I'm sure you'll know it if you're from the area. Anyway, the plan was just to have a couple beers, then head back, but one led to another, and another led to a cocktail. And since I never made an ass out of myself there before, the bartender never cut me off. Old Maryland bars are kind of cool like that. Eventually around 11 or so, with only a few boomers at the far end of the bar, I figured it was time to get a cup of coffee and hit the road. And that's when he came in. He was an old black man and he wore a worn leather jacket. He had scrappy facial hair, 
and if not for his shining shoes and hat, you would mistake him for a panhandler. He sat down right next to me despite four wide open seats on either side of me, then put his hand on my back and opened his mouth to speak. His breath stank like marijuana. You got a problem, boy, he said as if he knew me. A lot of people would have shit themselves over this and plenty more would claim that they came up with some fantastical coherent retort, but the truth is, I was pretty well run pissed to tell you what I said. All I know is he took his hand off my back once I said it and looked down the bar in the other direction. You got a light in you, he said a moment later. You pouring water on it, you're gonna put it out. This is coffee, I said smirking sideways. He didn't look up from the wall of bottles in front of us. Not really sure if he even heard me. I looked down at my phone for a bit when he didn't respond. and We sat in silence for a minute. The older guys at the other side of the bar quietly talking. He did talk again though. When he did, he said something to the effect of, There ain't no water in the soul, boy. Soul don't need no water. It needs fire. He seemed to be getting a bit pissed. You gonna kill yourself with this shit. He said when I said nothing in response. I staggered up quick and fell over backwards. I didn't lay there long though, as I'm sure I did not go unconscious. I'd pulled myself to my feet in a minute, and when I did, he was gone. I never saw him leave. I never heard the bar door open. One minute he was there, the next minute he wasn't, if you can believe it. I walked outside after paying my tab and hurled on the sidewalk. That was the last time I drank anything harder than beer. Stories thread? When I graduated preschool, my family sent me to a Catholic elementary school, and over the summer, I'd meet up with my preschool friends and elementary school friends, and we'd divide on school lines for a Nerf war. The field we fought on had two ditches on either side, and it sat across from a YMCA. Behind the south ditch was a railroad track. One day we meet up to play Nerf and my friend Carlos picks his gun first and rushes off to the trenches, then stops dead and screams. He runs back crying so hard he's coughing. He tries to speak but can't, and everyone is crowding him trying to learn what his issue is. I go to check the ditch and he grabs my arm and stammers out that we should call the police. I broke free and run to see what he saw. It had rained all week the week before, and lying before me in our ditch is a dead man whose exposure to the rain and elements has made him almost unrecognizable. At this point, the rest have caught up and half of us are crying. We got to the Y and phoned the police, who then phoned our parents. Carlos's older sister took us for ice cream, while my mom tried to explain to us that it was okay to feel upset at what we saw. Our other friend Colt's older brother told us the full story a few weeks later in the most elementary schooler friendly terms possible. Translated into adult speak, the guy we found was high off of his ass on something and got too close to the train as it was passing. It clipped him or something and he died either from the train or from rolling into the ditch. Browsing Reddit four years ago, find video titled Funny Memes to Brighten Your Day on some creepy subreddit. Video starts off normal with cheery stock music and shitty Facebook mom front page of Google bottom text memes. Music changes to ominous chanting. Images of police mock-ups of corpses cycle through, including pick related. Flash shot of a video of a faceless man with nails in his head. Cuts to kid in a coffin wearing a kiss t-shirt. Video turns back to normal and ends. I can't find the video now. I'm pretty sure it was taken down. A strange mail I found in my virtual inbox on April 19th, 2022. It was an automated message from a well-known website where artists can share their work. Supposedly, I had sent a request to reset my password, but at that time, I had not even been near the website since a while and, moreover, the username listed in the mail was completely unknown to me. Out of curiosity, I copied this unknown username from the email to look at the user's profile, and to my astonishment and horror, this profile was completely empty, apart from the fact that it used my real name as the user description. Of course, 
I never left my real name anywhere on this site. It's not even in the address of my virtual mailbox. This ominous profile with the unknown username was exactly as old as my own profile on this website, but it contained, as I've already mentioned, no content and it gave no information except that it had been accessed 25 times within 15 years and the user description had my real full name. Whoever created this ominous profile created it pretty much exactly at the same time that I did mine. And furthermore, this someone tried to log into this website with my email address the day before my mother died, which is why the automatic notification from this website then landed in my virtual mailbox. I have not been able to find a reasonable explanation for this. Years ago, camping alone, remote area. Not sure I'm not the first human being to set foot here in at least a century. Got fire going, hear a twig snap. Worried it's a cougar or a coyote. Retrieve AR-15, set it on the log next to me. Toss more logs onto fire. Twig snaps again. Look why I heard the sound. See eyes reflecting firelight. They're fucking six feet off the ground. An owl? A cougar perched in a tree? A bear on its hind legs? Aim super bright surefire at eyes and turn it on. Trees are lit up like day, and there's nothing there. Turn light off. Eyes are there, blinking rapidly like the light hurt its eyes. Shine light at them again. Nothing. Turn light off. Eyes blink rapidly again. Then, retreat into trees. Can hear brush rustling as it moves. What the fuck? Cradle rifle and lap. Toss more logs on fire. Hear leaves crunching behind me. Fuck. It's circled around me. Spin around. Shine flashlight. Nothing's fucking there but trees and bushes. Turn light off. Eyes blink rapidly. Then, stare steadily at me. Nope. Climb into Bronco. Lock all the doors. Sleep in back seat with rifle in my arms. Wake up next morning. My tent is collapsed. Something or someone pulled up all the tent pegs and pushed it over. Fuck this campsite, that JBEG. Move to a different area two miles away. This place is full of boulders, and it's near a dry creek bed. Set up camp at the base of a boulder half as big as my house. Build new fire pit. Start fire. Stack firewood. Oh yeah. Cooking chilly tonight. Hear bush rustling. Damn it, that better be a fucking possum. Click safety off of rifle. Look all around. There's the eyes again. Six feet off the ground. Shine flashlight. Nothing's there. Light off. Eyes blink rapidly. Then move. Eyes beginning to circle the fire. Rustling and snapping twigs as they move. Shine light repeatedly. Wiggle it around. Get up and move around trying to see whatever it is. Nothing. All I can see are the eyes reflecting my campfire, and only when the flashlight is off. Watching eyes warily, start creeping towards Bronco. Twig snaps behind me. Spin. See eyes in the trees behind me. Fuck. There's two of them. I I've got a gun. Quit fucking around and come out where I can see you. No response. Eyes continue circling camp, crunching, rustling, and snapping. Fuck this. Fire shot at the ground roughly where the feet of one should be. Both pairs of eyes stop and blink a few times. Eyes stand side by side, then disappear like whatever they were turned away from me. Hear them crunching through brush, heading deeper into woods, away from me. Get into Bronco and lock all the doors again. Don't want to pack my stuff because that involves setting my rifle down and turning my back on those things. Don't want to drive off without my stuff either. Settle for sitting in car, sitting up all night in case they come back. Fall asleep sometime around 4 a.m. Wake up at sunrise. My tent is shredded and the aluminum poles are bent. Sleeping bag is 20 feet away from camp and partially buried under a pile of leaves. Something pulled my pot off of the fire and ate my chili. Nope, pack my shit and get the fuck out of Dodge. One month later, tell friends about creepy eyes in the woods. They all think we should go find out what they were. Maybe it's Bigfoot. Decide that we should load for a bear. Friend one brings his FAL in 1911. 
Friend 2 brings AK-47 and a 357 Magnum. Friend 3 is poor, brings Mossberg shotgun. I bring AR-15 and CC-70B with 9mm. Friend 1 dead says he wants to go too, mostly to keep us out of trouble, and brings his Marlin 4570 and 44 Magnum along. Loans Friend 3 another 9mm. Set up camp at Boulder's site, show them around. Get fire going. Friend's dad breaks out a bottle of Jägermeister and we all share a drink. You tag along to keep you out of trouble and then he brings alcohol? What the fuck? Just one though, he doesn't want us armed and drunk. Swap spooky stories to get in the mood and discuss a Bigfoot quote unquote documentary on History Channel. Debate why the hell the History Channel has a documentary on Bigfoot. Suddenly, hear loud twig snap. Look around, spot eyes six feet off the ground again. Everybody shines flashlights simultaneously. Nothing there. Turn lights off. Eyes blink rapidly. Dude, it's just like you said. Everybody taking turns shining lights and waving them around. Eyes start circling the camp, crunching through the brush. How come we can't see anything when we shine our lights? Sudden crashing noise. Hear rocks sliding and falling. Another pair of eyes blinks on top of the huge boulder, then drops to the ground with a loud thump. Shine lights. Nothing. Eyes start circling camp like the first set. Friend's dad. Fuck this shit. Rock and roll. Mad minute. Everyone fires every round in their rifles and shotgun at the eyes, then switches to pistols and keeps shooting when the rifles run empty. Reload. Ears are ringing. Shine lights. See nothing but trees full of bullet holes. Turn lights off. Both pairs of eyes are gone. Search the woods with flashlights. Don't find any tracks. Find something like blood on the ground. Looks black under our flashlights. Find nothing else. Feel stupid and crawl into friend one's dad's huge army tent. Chatter in our sleeping bags. Agree that we were dumbasses for shooting like maniacs when we didn't even know what our targets were. No one will admit that we were scared like little bitches and that is why we shot. Finally, wear off the adrenaline and we fall asleep. Wake up. Something is rustling outside the tent. Slide pistol out of holster and loudly snap the safety off. Nearly shit my heart out when a hand clamps over my pistol and the hand holding it. It's friend one's dad. It's right outside. Don't move. Slides out of sleeping bag and stands up. Oh shit. Whatever it is, it's rubbing against the tent because the tent wall is bowed towards us. Friend's dad carefully steps over friend three to get closer to the side of the tent. Where's his gun? Suddenly, stabs into the side of the tent with the biggest fucking bowie knife I've ever seen. Something that sounds like a cross between a bear that just got kicked in the balls and a pissed off elephant screams. That entire side of the tent collapses. The others wake up and start yelling. Friend's dad is shouting, don't shoot, don't shoot. He's afraid we're gonna shoot each other in a panic. Finally pile out of tent and start frantically waving flashlights and guns in all directions. Nothing, it's dead silent. Me, friends two and three pile into my Bronco. Friend one and his dad into the Suburban. Stay up as long as we can. We all fall asleep. Five guys hyped up on panic and adrenaline and we all fall asleep? <sighs> Wake up shortly after sunrise. Tent is collapsed, but it hasn't been tampered with. Ice chest is flipped on its side and the contents spilled. Only things missing are a package of lunch meat, all of our beef jerky, and we brought a lot, and the bottle of Jaeger. Fuck this, we're going home. Start packing. Friend's dad finds his knife in the tent. It's covered in blood so dark it's almost black. He nopes, cleans it off, and keeps packing. We haul ass out of there and stop at a diner for breakfast, waiting for waitress to bring us our food. Try puzzling out what the hell it was that we encountered out there. Friend two. Wait, the meat makes sense. But why the hell did it steal the Jaeger? Since then, I've spent a lot of time in the woods. It's kind of my job. And I've seen some weird, creepy shit, including things very similar to this encounter. I don't freak out about it now. And I'm not going to fire panic shots into the dark or anything like that but I do have a healthy respect for whatever is out there, and I don't go into the wilderness without a gun, period. 
there is some seriously bizarre, unexplainable shit out there. So stay safe.